All through the pandemic, we've been advised to wear masks that cover our noses and mouths to help slow the spread of COVID. And now that the Omicron variant is among us, that's more important than ever before. It's reportedly much more infectious than any other variant we've seen before. But it's been a bit of a wild west in terms of mask wearing. So if you're like me over the last couple of years, you'll have found masks to fit pretty much every use case. You've got the, oh my God, I popped to the corner shop and forgot my mask jumper mask. You've got the buff mask for when it's a little bit chilly. You've got cloth masks to match every conceivable outfit and style. These are better for the environment because you're not throwing stuff away all the time. But let's be honest, who is washing them as often as they should be? <laughs> but the masks that are most often recommended are surgical masks and FFP2 and 3 masks. But these masks offer a huge range in protection and that's assuming that you're even wearing them correctly. This is correct. This is not correct. This is also not correct. This, also not correct. This is, no, this is not correct. Nope, not that one either. Nope, that one's not correct. Mm, no. What? How? Okay. I might have been heard to say that wearing your mask with your nose out is no better than wearing your underwear with your penis out. And if you've got your mask underneath your chin, then you might as well be having both your penis and your testicles hanging loose. Now, a study's come out that shows that FFP2 masks are astronomically more effective at reducing infection risk. And let me show you why. The study looked at the likelihood of infection between two people, one who's infected and one who's susceptible when each was wearing a different kind of mask. They compared surgical masks with FFP2 masks and also noted the differences when the masks were fitted to the face versus when they were loose and unadjusted. That's because while most masks are very good at filtering virus particles out of the air, the majority of leakage in and out actually happens around the sides. If you're wearing a well-fitted surgical mask and someone infected with COVID is also wearing a well-fitting surgical mask, then the average risk of infection is around 10%. That might not sound like much, but it would only take 10 of these encounters before statistically you're infected. Now, assuming the infected person kept on wearing their surgical mask, but you popped on an FFP2, even if it wasn't well-fitted, it would cut down your risk of infection to less than 7%. If you took the time to make sure that your FFP2 was properly adjusted, then the infection chance plummets to just 1.5%. That's a nearly tenfold difference just by changing your own mask type. But the difference is even more striking when it's the infected person who changes their mask. Even unadjusted, FFP2 masks worn by both parties reduce the risk of infection to just 4.2%. And when everyone is wearing their FFP2 properly, the infection chance is just 0.14%. That's nearly a hundredfold difference from the surgical masks. It means that you could have more than 700 encounters with infected people before, statistically speaking, you're infected. This reinforces what the science has been telling us all along, that the main goal of masks is to prevent you from infecting other people rather than protecting you from infection in the first place. And since you may not be aware you're carrying the virus in the early days of infection, this is when effective masks are most important. If you want your mask to be more than a fashion statement and actually effective, then it should fit tightly all around your face. It should hug the bridge of your nose and cling to your cheeks and chin so that you can't feel air coming in or out. This can be harder if you've got a beard and not every brand of FFP2 is created equal, but the numbers show that any effort you make to reduce that airflow can be a good thing. And if you're wondering how they fit, well, I was pleasantly surprised. They're tight around here as they're meant to be because that's where they're actually stopping the COVID from getting in at you. But this weird duck-like shape means that you've actually got a lot of space for your mouth to move. My lips aren't touching the inside of the mask. And even as I breathe in quite hard, I'm not stopping the airflow in and out of my mouth. No, it might not be the most stylish, but it is going to help keep you alive, which by all accounts is better than the alternative. So the take home here is any mask is better than no mask. But if you really want to protect yourself, your friends, your family, and your fellow human beings, then the best thing you can do is wear a properly fitted FFP2 or FFP3 mask. That in addition to social distancing, getting your vaccination and being sensible in the face of an ongoing and evolving pandemic can help keep us all safe and help us get through this together.